Alright guys, welcome back. Uh, this video is an introduction to game theory. So, we're not really going to solve this problem, we're just kind of going to look at exactly what we see here. Um, how to read this, alright? So first of all, this is called a payoff matrix. Alright, now the idea of this payoff matrix is that we have, um, we're making the assumption this is a duopoly, so there's only two companies. So in this case we have Coca-Cola and Pepsi. Those are going to be our two companies. And the idea is that they're competing. Remember that they are interdependent meaning that the production level, so we're talking about they have two options of either producing a low output or a high output, and whatever they choose is going to influence the profits of the other. So, in other words, that interdependence is showing that their actions affect the other, so they're not in this in an isolated way. So how do we read these? Because we have eight numbers here, we have four boxes, so what exactly are we looking at? Because again, in this video we're not going to solve this. The next video we will though. So what we're looking at here is relatively simple. Um, might look a little intimidating, but it's not that bad. So first of all, we see that each of them has the same two options, right? Coke can either have low output or high output. Pepsi, either low output or high output. So what do these numbers represent? These represent the profits that each of these firms would make if they choose these two combinations. So this quadrant reflects what happens if they both choose a low level of output. Now, the important question is, which is which? Okay, so, to help us out here, I'm gonna put the letter P or the letter C. Letter P represents that that's Pepsi. Um, that's gonna be our horizontal axis. I'll put the letter C for Coca-Cola. That's our vertical, all right? So this will apply in every payoff matrix that you do. All right, this number $200, that is the amount Pepsi would earn. That would be Pepsi's profit if they both choose to do a low level of output. So the first number, the one on the left, that's always going to be the number of the horizontal axis. So that means if we drop down to this box with high output, that would be Pepsi with the 160. All right. If we move over to the right side, Pepsi would be the first one. Again, they're always on the left. That's the 110, and Pepsi is the first 90 over here. So our horizontal axis is always the first number left to right in the box. Okay. Coca-Cola, since that's our vertical axis, that's always going to be the second number here. So again, it's pretty simple, we walk through it, we have our Coke on the right, Coke on the right, Coke on the right, and Coke, you guessed it, on the right hand side. So this is telling us, now we can look and we can compare, all right, if they both do low outputs, Pepsi will earn $200, whereas Coke will only earn 110. If Pepsi does high output and Coke does low, this will be the combination, Pepsi will earn 160, Coke will earn 125, et cetera, and we can do it for all four combinations. So we're gonna use this information to then make certain determinations of whether or not these um, firms have a dominant strategy to find a Nash equilibrium if one exists, and also to determine whether or not these companies find themselves in what is known as a prisoner's dilemma, okay? But that's the basics, that's how you're gonna read these, always left to right. The horizontal axis, that's gonna be the one on the left-hand side, the one on the right hand side is the vertical, okay? And I think that's about it. I can't really think of anything else to say for that. So, till next time, this has been a La Money production.